It is my great honor to introduce Professor Quang An Mo from uh, uh, Vietnam National University. Uh, he's a, a one of the leading mathematicians of geometric analysis and partial differential equation with application to mathematical physics and applied sciences. Okay, and he's uh, he took his PhD from National University of Singapore in 2013 under the supervision of Professor Xin Wang Xu. After that, he got a lot of positions, postdoc positions, until he became a, a professor of uh, associate professor of Vietnam National University in Hanoi. Uh, notably, he was selected by uh, first Kato, Toshio Kato Fellowship, uh, fellow of uh, fellowship from Mass Society of Japan, and he stayed more than one year. Uh, in University of Tokyo. And today he's going to talk on the class of GJMS equations on the standard N sphere. Please, Professor Nungo. Thank you, Professor Giga. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Professor Giga, for the invitation and other uh, organizers for uh, uh, arranging this uh, talk for me. So uh, today uh, I'm going to discuss. Um, the class of uh, high order equations uh, on the sphere. And uh, this is based on uh, my recent work with uh, Dr. Uh, Ali Hajjo and uh, my um, student. Okay, so uh, uh, the the main uh, uh, content of the talk is uh, a question uh, asked by uh, Paul uh, Yang and uh, Feng Wuhan. So uh, in order to understand uh, this conjecture, uh, I will reveal uh, something on the uh, uh, solar type inequalities and uh, the idea to uh, give a proof of uh, uh, the inequality leading to the conjecture. And then I talk about uh, our contribution. Then uh, I will discuss uh, something uh, including technical difficulties when we try to uh, solve uh, uh, the conjecture. So that's the outline of the talk. So um, so for for those who, who are interested in uh, PDE, so the second order sublap inequality for uh, Rn is uh, a very basic one. So it says that uh, you can bound uh, certain uh, Lebesgue norm up to uh, critical exponent. Um, using the Dirichlet energies. So if we replace uh, the uh, Rn by the sphere, uh, then uh, we obtain uh, a very similar uh, inequality. But uh, this time, we need to add uh, an uh, L2 norm. So what we obtain is uh, inequality 2. Here's uh, I just uh, uh, write inequality 2 uh, from uh, for, for both uh, critical and subcritical case. So, uh, namely, the, the exponent p um, goes from two up to uh, two n over n minus two. So, now these two inequalities have a very rich uh, literature. So, uh, I should avoid these uh, thing, and uh, people can uh, look at uh, in uh, many textbook. Okay. So. Okay, so uh, let me focus on uh, the critical case. So the critical case uh, for uh, Sobolev inequality for the sphere uh, is simply you replace uh, the p by uh, two n minus over n minus two, then you come up with uh, the second inequality here, and uh, if we place uh, something. Uh, to the right hand side of that inequality, then we can rewrite uh, that inequality in the form of uh, inequality three. So here's uh, uh, we uh, have a new uh, operator. Uh, I write here the capital L to N. Uh, this is uh, the well known conformal Laplacian on a sphere. So uh, instead of we have a two two term, uh, one is one in uh, one involves a gradient and the other L2 norm, we have a very uh, simple one. So the integral of V times uh, L2V. And uh, uh, 
uh, our starting point is uh, uh, this um, inequality. Okay, so uh, the conformal Laplacian on, on sphere is uh, a very simple example of a low order conformal transformation. So it has some conformal properties. Uh, and uh, uh, once you have a sublet inequality for uh, conformal Laplacian, the number three, uh, we, we wish to uh, 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 look for uh, other similar inequality for uh, higher order conformal uh, transformation. So to do so, uh, uh, we look at uh, the, the history and uh, the first uh, higher order uh, conformal tra transformation uh, was found by uh, Panet in uh, 83. So it's, this is a uh, uh, um, product of two conformal Laplacia with a different uh, uh, dimension. Uh, here I denoted by uh, P4. And uh, if we uh, increase uh, the order of uh, P4, we will uh, obtain uh, what we call the GJMS operator. So this is a 2M uh, differential operator. And on sphere, it is just a, a product of uh, 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 several uh, conformal Laplacian with uh, uh, different uh, dimension, and uh, uh, for uh, for this uh, uh, high order uh, operator, we wish to uh, uh, prove a very similar uh, sublet inequality for this new operator. So uh, when we look at uh, uh, the form of uh, uh, sublet inequality on sphere. Uh, written using the conformal Laplacian. Uh, uh, the right-hand side is uh, integral of V times uh, L2. So we wish to uh, replace uh, this uh, right-hand side by a similar one. So here, we, uh, we instead of using uh, L2, uh, we may uh, play with uh, P4 or even P2M. And we wish to prove uh, the inequality 4 and the inequality 6. Uh, on, on the slide. So uh, so these two uh, uh, expected inequalities uh, was proved uh, a long time ago uh, by uh, uh, Beckner, I guess. So uh, they all, they all, uh, he already proved uh, four and, and six uh, uh, for arbitrary uh, and sphere. Uh, so so um, the, the restriction uh, for the fourth order uh, inequality is uh, p less than uh, 2m minus n uh, over n minus 4 if uh, the dimension is not uh, smaller than 5. And uh, similar for minus uh, 6 to 0 if uh, dimension is 3. So um, uh, there's one uh, big difference between uh, inequality 4, 6, uh, Sorry, uh, compared to uh, uh, inequality of uh, uh, three here. So for sublap inequality uh, for conformal Laplacian, uh, the dimensions start from three, and uh, somehow you only have a, a one form. So here in in uh, inequality four, uh, dimension uh, could be three of uh, four five uh, and above. But uh, these two uh, inequality uh, for three dimension and for uh, bigger than uh, five dimensions, uh, they are different. Uh, when you look at the, the left-hand side, uh, for example, when dimension uh, is not smaller than five, the exponent must be uh, bigger than one. But uh, for three dimension, uh, uh, the range for the exponent p uh, must be a negative somehow. So, so therefore, uh, uh, even for the fourth uh, uh, order operator, um, uh, we have a sort of uh, two types of uh, uh, inequality forms. And uh, in fact, uh, these two types uh, create uh, some, um, uh, some, main, uh, some measured uh, difference uh, and uh, that's uh, somehow lead to uh, the conjecture that uh, I'm going to discuss right now. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, here, here's uh, the brief uh, history on, uh, on the number of form six. So um, a better proof uh, uh, the uh, uh, two M differential operator uh, using this uh, spherical harmonics. 
uh, and uh, uh, so this is just for the uh, n uh, bigger than uh, four uh, in the case of a fourth order operator. And uh, for three dimension, um, is is not known. It was not known until uh, a preprint uh, in two thousand and three by uh, Yang and Yu. So uh, they proved uh, the uh, inequality seven. So this is the the, uh, the one I uh, discussed uh, previous slide. So uh, here's minus um, three, uh, and uh, here's is minus six, which is uh, the critical exponent in three dimension. And uh, uh, the proof is uh, uh, using uh, um, variation plus uh, the symmetrization process. So a uh, few years later, uh, Ju uh, generalized uh, inequality seven uh, for a uh, higher order uh, operator. So uh, they, he proved that uh, uh, the, the, the inequality seven uh, remains uh, valid if uh, uh, we play with the uh, GGMS operator. And uh, the inequality uh, eight is uh, the critical uh, sublap inequality for uh, GGMS operator. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, five years ago, uh, uh, Hang and Zhang uh, proposed uh, another approach to uh, uh, we prove uh, sublap inequality for uh, force order uh, differential operator on uh, on the three three sphere. So uh, if you, uh, we make you the uh, uh, variation uh, technique, then uh, somehow we need to uh, look for the minimizing problem between uh, the uh, energy uh, uh, energy uh, functional. And uh, um, and a, a certain uh, sublet uh, uh, norm. So uh, in in this work, they uh, modify this uh, process. So they uh, they add a, a, a small perturbation, uh, the L two uh, perturbation, uh, uh, driven by the small epsilon, uh, which is uh, positive. And uh, they they wish to prove that. Uh, uh, somehow this uh, minimizing problem has a minimizer uh, which uh, solve uh, this uh, force order PDE on the three sphere. And uh, if uh, they can uh, prove that um, if uh, epsilon is sufficiently small, uh, this epsilon is constant, then uh, using uh, the property of uh, minimizing uh, problem, uh, we immediately have uh, this estimate. So uh, the right hand side of this estimate is just uh, the, um, uh, uh, the the energy uh, evaluated as constant function. So uh, you arrive at this um, uh, inequality and you just uh, simply send epsilon goes to zero. And uh, the right hand side gives you the sub constant. And of course, uh, on the left hand side, you have uh, some uh, uh, quotient of the energies and uh, uh, multiply both sides by uh, uh, this uh, Lebesgue uh, norm. And you have uh, the sublap inequality for a uh, force order uh, operator on a three sphere. So that's the strategies of uh, uh, Hang and Yang. Uh, okay. So uh, unfortunately, uh, they cannot uh, do that. So, uh, they expect uh, that and then they put as a conjecture. Uh, the conjecture is as follow. If um, epsilon is sufficiently small, then uh, any positive smooth solution uh, to this force or the PDE on three sphere uh, must be constant. So if uh, we have a, a affirmative answer to this conjecture, uh, that uh, immediately um, give uh, another proof for uh, the sublap inequality for first order operator on three sphere. Okay, so um, so let me uh, mention uh, something about uh, their work. So although uh, this is a conjecture in uh, their paper, uh, uh, they uh, okay. Uh, I should uh, go back. So they they focus on this for the first order uh, PDE 
and uh, using a, a method um, symmetrization uh, uh, process uh, developed on uh, three sphere, uh, they were able to prove that uh, V epsilon must be uh, uh, radio symmetric and uh, somehow it must be constant. So uh, working uh, on the minimizers uh, of this uh, particular PDE, they, they were able to prove uh, uh, the inequality on uh, S3. So, so somehow, uh, somehow the, uh, uh, the conjecture uh, they asked is uh, for a larger class uh, of optimizer, uh, for example, uh, any solution to this uh, uh, high order PDE is not uh, just a, a special optimizers for, uh, for this uh, CPDE. Okay. Uh, uh, two years ago, uh, this conjecture was uh, confirmed by uh, uh, Xi Yang. And uh, and uh, this is uh, the starting point of our work. Okay. So uh, combining the the conjecture by uh, Han and Yang, and um, the the proof uh, by uh, Xi Yang, uh, we we wish to uh, prove uh, or obtain uh, a similar uh, answer, a, a similar properties for solution to. Uh, higher uh, order PDE, so replacing uh, P4 by P2M, and then rewrite uh, the equation in this uh, uh, convenience form. Uh, we wish to prove that uh, if epsilon is simplicity small but uh, positive, then any smooth solution uh, to this uh, equation uh, 11 uh, must be constant. So if we can prove that, so uh, repeating the argument by uh, Han and Yang, uh, we are able to uh, provide a new proof uh, of uh, sublap inequality for um, GJMS operator. So uh, inspired by uh, the setting up uh, of Yang, Han and Yang's work, we uh, focus on the case uh, when dimension less than uh, the order operator. So in, in case of a P4, uh, uh, the 2m equals 4, so the dimension is 3. So here's the dimension is at least 3, but less than 2m. Uh, and the dimension is odd uh, for some uh, technical reason. Uh, alpha is positive, and epsilon is a uh, perturbation, which is small uh, uh, in the range from uh, 0 to 1. Okay. So uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, we wish to uh, prove that uh, for sufficiently small epsilon, uh, any smooth positive uh, solution must be constant. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, here's the, um, the result. So we we are successful uh, successful in proving uh, uh, that uh, expected uh, properties. So uh, the precise statement is uh, as follow: If the dimension is uh, odd and not smaller than three. Uh, less than 2m, as uh, I said earlier. Then uh, between 0 and 1, there's some threshold uh, called epsilon star, such that uh, if uh, epsilon smaller than uh, epsilon star and um, the exponent is not uh, super critical, then uh, any smooth positive solution to the high order PDE uh, must be constant. And uh, um, if epsilon is uh, 0, uh, namely, uh, there's no perturbation to the equation, then uh, the uh, equation must be a uh, subcritical. So uh, uh, yeah, so we combine the two cases uh, together in uh, in this theorem. So uh, on those, uh, uh, this uh, the result of this theorem is expected uh, very similar to um, the work of Xi Yang, also uh, expected by the conjecture by Hang and Yang. Uh, uh, working from uh, uh, fourth dimension to 2m dimension uh, for arbitrary m uh, is not a straightforward. Uh, in fact, we uh, although we uh, mimic uh, the, the approach by Xi uh, Hong Jiang, but uh, uh, we need to modify and uh, provide new ingredient uh, uh, in order to avoid uh, some uh, difficulties because uh, we are working on uh, 
arbitrary uh, dimension, uh, arbitrary uh, uh, order of uh, operator. So uh, technically, uh, it consists of uh, three uh, steps. So uh, first of all, uh, we need to uh, derive uh, uh, some uh, integral equation uh, on Rn. So uh, that integral equation comes from this uh, differential uh, equation on uh, Sn. And then uh, we focus on the integral equation on Rn. And uh, we prove that a uh, solution to that integral equation must be radial symmetric. So once you have a uh, radial symmetry of solution uh, to the equation on Rn, uh, we are able to prove that uh, the solution B itself must be constant on the sphere. So that's a strategy. Okay. So uh, uh, let me uh, talk uh, a little bit uh, in detail. So uh, here's uh, uh, the approach by uh, Xi Hong Zhang. So of course, uh, what what we uh, what we start is uh, the differential equation of uh, S three. Then uh, we use a projection to project that equation um, uh, onto R three. Then uh, he obtained both uh, differential uh, equation and uh, integral equation on R three. So uh, the, the the difficulty is uh, uh, we uh, we do not know much about. Uh, the solution u uh, near infinity or, or somehow. Uh, so to have a good control for u, uh, he used a Kelvin transform. So the Kelvin transform uh, turned uh, uh, the equation uh, for u on uh, R3 uh, to some equation uh, on the Punch domain. And uh, uh, via some complicated uh, argument, uh, in terms of uh, moving planes technique, um, he, he was able to prove that the uh, U star, which is the Kelvin transform U, is radial symmetric. And uh, if U star is radial symmetric, then uh, uh, using some uh, cousin one uh, identity, uh, he can prove that the solution V itself um, is radial symmetric uh, uh, and uh, then uh, a constant. So, uh, so this, uh, uh, this strategy is prom promoting, but uh, uh, it's not easy to uh, generalize uh, this approach uh, uh, to uh, P2M. So uh, uh, when we look at uh, his proof and we found that, uh, that uh, there's some, uh, some, something we can do and uh, there's some step we, uh, we do need. Uh, so here's our uh, approach. So uh, again, we, uh, we need to project uh, our equation from uh, uh, Sn to Rn. But uh, instead of uh, working with uh, differential uh, equation, uh, we work on uh, integral equation. So that integral equation uh, uh, plus some uh, good control on uh, U, uh, we, we, we are able to use the method of moving plane uh, to prove that uh, U is um, ratio symmetric uh, uh, with respect to the origin of Rn. So once you once you have uh, radial symmetry, uh, you can uh, prove that uh, uh, V is a constant. Yeah. So uh, we so we avoid two things. First is uh, uh, this type of uh, differential equation, and the other is a Kelvin transform. Okay. So uh, that's uh, the strategy. So uh, in the rest of my talk, I will uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, three difficulties uh, in detail. So uh, these three difficulties um, we are facing when uh, uh, dealing with uh, high order equation on uh, SN. Uh, so the first uh, difficulty is uh, how to uh, transfer uh, our equation on uh, uh, Sn to some integral equation on Rn. So, uh, roughly speaking, um, uh, there are at least two rules uh, achieving. Uh, so they are uh, very similar or very. Uh, so, th so they 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 conserve uh, what uh, we call the sup uh, super polyharmonic. So somehow, uh, to be able to transfer this equation to uh, uh, a suitable 
uh, uh, integral equation, you need to control the sign of uh, the multi uh, Laplacian of the solution. And uh, uh, in fact, Xi uh, Hong Yang, uh, he followed this uh, approach. So they uh, make you uh, a lot of techniques from uh, potential uh, uh, analysis. And uh, eventually um, he was able to, uh, uh, to get this uh, integral equation. And uh, uh, in, in the published version, uh, uh, this part uh, it consists of nearly 10 pages. So uh, uh, this is very complicated uh, argument. And uh, we thought that uh, it is impossible to generalize to two uh, m uh, order case, so we uh, need to uh, look for a way around. And uh, somehow we were successful in, in doing that. Uh, we exploit the relation of uh, pro projection uh, center at different point. So uh, this nice structure of the sphere uh, appears, and uh, uh, somehow we can uh, go through uh, this argument uh, very uh, quickly. So in in the proof, uh, it is only consists of like uh, one one page. Uh, the second um, difficulty is uh, a compactness result. So uh, why why this is uh, difficult and why one needs a compactness result? So this be, this is because uh, um, the equation uh, we are working on there are two terms with a different uh, type of behavior. Okay, so uh, uh, let me quickly uh, uh, mention this. So to prove the symmetry of a solution, uh, we use a method of a uh, moving plane. So, uh, uh, so uh, the relation between uh, the, uh, the function V on the sphere uh, and the, the projected um, function U on uh, Rn is, uh, is, is this. So uh, some, uh, somehow uh, um, when X go to infinity, uh, the solution U uh, also goes to infinity. This is because uh, the dimension N is less than 2M. So if you think that uh, U is a blue curve in uh, this picture and you reflect, uh, to reflect this blue curve uh, uh, about the uh, vertical line uh, lambda, and you obtain um, the uh, red curve here, uh, then the idea of uh, the, the, the moving plane method is to compare uh, the blue and the red curves. And uh, if you, you, you are able to prove that uh, uh, the blue and the red curve are identical, then you have some symmetry. So the, the symmetry curve uh, like uh, here, uh, I need to uh, prove that uh, uh, it is a symmetry with respect to uh, zero uh, vertical line. So uh, because the use go to infinity uh, when X go to infinity, so uh, somehow the blue curve uh, will lie uh, above the red curve uh, as shown in this picture. And uh, I need to uh, uh, show that uh, uh, such uh, an, an estimate remains valid if we decrease uh, lambda towards zero. And uh, if uh, we are able to prove that uh, we, are, we can uh, decrease, uh, push uh, lambda to zero, then we can do it in the opposite direction, starting from very uh, negative uh, lambda, and we push forward uh, to zero and uh, combining these two steps. And we have the symmetry of a blue curve um, at uh, about the uh, zero vertical line. So that's uh, the idea of the, the moving plane method. But uh, then uh, there comes some uh, difficulty. <clears throat> so when we, uh, we compare uh, uh, the blue and the red curve, namely we need to compare uh, the, the, the function, the value of the function u and its reflection ux uh, lambda, uh, uh, we have some problem with the, the kernel. So uh, the kernel uh, in this, uh, in this uh, formula is uh, consists of two terms. Uh, the one term uh, involves the linearly uh, perturbation, so, uh, which is uh, u. This is uh, a, power of, uh, a power of u, of course, the exponent is one. 
And uh, the other term involving uh, a power, but uh, with the negative exponent. So uh, you have uh, two terms, two power terms with a different or opposite um, exponents. Then uh, uh, somehow you need to uh, maintain the balance between these two terms. So uh, that requires a compactness uh, result. So in, in other words, uh, you cannot uh, uh, too big and uh, or you cannot uh, too small. So they stay away from zero and from infinity for both sides. So that um, that's the the second uh, devotee, and I call this uh, the compactness result. Okay. Uh, so the the third uh, difficulty is uh, um, is uh, how to, uh, uh, to uh, how was uh, able to select uh, the method of moving plane. So uh, usually uh, people uh, often use uh, either the method of moving sphere or the method of moving plane to prove uh, symmetry of solution. So in our case, uh, we have uh, uh, a very a very nice uh, equation, but uh, uh, some, somehow we we have uh, a weight uh, which is not uh, good enough uh, from my personal point of view. So uh, uh, it's, it's it's not clear if uh, we can uh, still use a method of moving a sphere in the case of. Uh, this um, weight. So uh, we decided to uh, make use of method of moving plane. But uh, when we uh, make use of the method of moving uh, plane, then uh, there's some uh, new difficulty arise. So for example, uh, it seems that um, uh, there's no, uh, uh, from my uh, personal point of view, uh, it's not clear how to apply uh, the method of moving plane for uh, equation uh, with uh, negative exponent lights uh, our equation. So uh, in case of uh, uh, elliptic equation with a positive uh, exponent here, uh, both the, the method uh, moving plane and moving sphere work very well. But in case of uh, negative exponent, uh, I, uh, we, we don't uh, know much about this. So, so we uh, need to uh, uh, look at uh, uh, in detail. And uh, 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 fortunately, uh, uh, we have a very good control on uh, the growth of uh, the solution uh, U. Uh, for example, using uh, this projection and then V uh, is a smooth positive solution on a complex uh, sphere. Then uh, we have, uh, about for you, both side, uh, the poly, polynomial bow. So, uh, so using this bow, which plays uh, a very, uh, very important role in our argument, uh, we uh, somehow uh, uh, are able to uh, make you of the method of moving plane uh, to solve that uh, uh, solution to this uh, integral equation must be uh, radial symmetric. Okay. So, um, so that's the three uh, difficulties uh, I want to discuss. So here's uh, the application, of course, uh, um, using uh, our uh, properties of solution, uh, uh, we immediately uh, prove uh, the, uh, the following uh, sub sublab inequality for uh, GJMS uh, operator. So uh, in uh, inequality 12, uh, we uh, combine critical and uh, subcritical uh, case together. And uh, uh, it is uh, quite interesting uh, to see that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we, we, we can talk about uh, um, the exponent alpha uh, even uh, smaller than one, uh, perhaps because uh, the dimension n is smaller than 2m. And, uh, uh, and uh, recently we realized that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, this uh, class of inequality uh, has some order uh, in the following way. Uh, we, can, um, we, can, uh, we can use a critical, um, critical inequality uh, to derive uh, the sub 
uh, critical inequality. And um, uh, from the sub uh, critical, when the, the exponent bigger than one, we can uh, derive uh, the case for the exponent uh, less than one. So the missing term is uh, alpha equal to one. So in the proof, uh, it seems that uh, the compactness, uh, we have some trouble with uh, the compactness when alpha equal to one. And in fact, uh, the, the, the inequality in that case must be uh, must be in uh, the form of 13. So uh, the power here is replaced by uh, some uh, exponential uh, thing. And uh, um, interestingly, uh, we have this uh, uh, order. So uh, so the, the, the subcritical case for uh, beta bigger than one uh, can uh, derive uh, um, the limiting case and the limiting case can uh, apply the uh, uh, subcritical with exponent less than one. Okay, so uh, that's uh, uh, the um, appli application uh, of uh, our result. Okay, and uh, the second application is uh, we can uh, revisit uh, the positive case, uh, namely uh, when the dimension is bigger than 2m. So, um, so in this case, uh, we have a similar equation, but uh, the exponent is uh, bigger than uh, a zero. And uh, of course, uh, the proof is uh, much uh, simpler because uh, uh, these two terms uh, behave uh, similarly, so we don't need any compactness result. So uh, using our argument, we can uh, recoup with proofness. And uh, of course, um, the re result is exactly the same. So if alpha uh, belongs to zero one, then uh, any solution to this uh, critical or subcritical must be constant. But when uh, there's no li uh, linear uh, perturbation, then uh, the equation must be subcritical. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think I have uh, five minutes. So uh, let me uh, discuss some uh, uh, something uh, relating to uh, our work. So um, uh, let me uh, recall uh, the equation. This is a projected equation on Rn. So uh, when there's no uh, linearly uh, put up, uh, term, uh, then uh, we have uh, equation 14. And uh, equation 14 is very similar to uh, the high order hardy Hanel equation on Rn. So uh, this uh, HH equation is uh, very uh, simple one. So here's the weight, it's just a, a normal thing. And um, uh, and uh, when we compare the weight of uh, 14, and we see that uh, this weight behaves like uh, x uh, to the power of minus two sigma. And uh, if sigma is positive, then uh, uh, this, uh, um, so this weight create a, a super critical exponent uh, because of uh, this. So, so therefore, uh, if we think that the equation 14 is uh, somehow uh, a higher order hardy Hanel equation uh, or an N, so this uh, 14 is in super critical uh, regimes. So uh, therefore, um, um, we, 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 therefore we, can, uh, uh, we can think about uh, uh, the equation, uh, uh, the question of, uh, the structure of solution uh, to this equation. Of course, uh, this uh, equation 14 has a very special type of uh, equation, uh, as, uh, like um, a bubble. So, but, uh, so, so, but the question is, accept uh, uh, this bubble solution, uh, is there any other solution to this uh, equation, even for a simpler one, okay. Um, okay. So uh, another thing is uh, uh, this equation is uh, uh, very similar to uh, uh, Matukama equation in R3. Uh, this equation is from astrophysics and uh, uh, it is now known that uh, um, if, uh, for example, this um, Matukama equation, if the exponent P is not, uh, is subcritical, uh, then, uh, um, then any solution uh, to this equation must be uh, radio symmetric somehow. So uh, 
we we can ask a similar question uh, to this uh, to this equation uh, without uh, improve, uh, imposing uh, any uh, asymptotic behavior infinity. Uh, let let me re remind you that uh, uh, when we uh, uh, project our equation on um, from uh, S n to R n, uh, the the projected function u has a uh, uh, behavior good control from below and from above. So uh, that gives uh, us some symmetry of u. But now if we forget about um, that um, important properties that we can ask if, uh, uh, if u is solution to this uh, equation, then uh, can we have some uh, uh, symmetry property or, or, or something similar? Okay, so uh, that would be uh, uh, interesting, but uh, we do not know yet. Okay. <laughs> So um, yeah, so, so so the last one, uh, uh, this, this, uh, which is um, the one I just mentioned, uh, can we have some symmetry uh, for this high order equation uh, without any symmetry solution, uh, without uh, any asymptotic behavior uh, at infinity? So um, yeah, we do not know yet, even for the case of uh, um, uh, R3, etc. So I think uh, I. Uh, I complete my talk here. Yeah, thank you for your attention. <coughs> thank you for your wonderful talk. Uh, are there any questions and comments? Please unmute or please raise your hand. So maybe let me start with a very simple question. Uh, what what do you mean, J G J M S equation? What is abbreviation is? Uh, you mean the name? Name and also the what is exactly the object is J G J M S. Oh yeah, so the G J M S is uh, the name for uh, for mathematician. Uh, Aha, mathematician uh, name. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Graham, yeah, Jensen, uh, somehow, yeah, uh, and. Uh, this is a very uh, a similar generation for P4. So P4 we call the Panet uh, operator. Panet. Uh -huh. so P4 is similar to conformal Laplacian. So uh -huh. that's how they, uh, uh, they play uh, the Gauss uh, bonnet, um, some, something like uh, the Gauss bonnet identity. So, uh -huh. okay. so yeah, it's, it's a link between the topology and uh, uh, geometry yes. manifold. Yeah. Graham, so yeah, if, yes. if, you, if you understand this operator and then and, and its equation, then, then you can say something about topology, I think. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Uh, Daniel, please. Yeah, thank you for the interesting talk. I have a question. So, I mean, you, you need compactness, but you are in the critical case. Uh, and so how do you obtain compactness in the critical case? Oh yeah, uh, this is because uh, we have a epsilon. Ah, because of the epsilon gives you the compactness. Right, right, so yeah. And, and so, uh, yeah. without epsilon, then uh, you, you cannot have compactness. Yes, exactly, okay. no, 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 when, that is absolutely clear. Uh, right, right. But without the epsilon, I was wondering, you are in the critical case, how can you? Yeah, we, they, they have they have a, a setup family a solution, the bubble one, you, you just rescale that. Mm. We have many solutions. Yeah. Okay, that this was my question, basically. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Yeah, so let me give uh, one more. <clears throat> Uh, question. Uh, you use a, a, a method of moving plane. Yeah. Yes. And uh, this method often needs a strong maximal principle. At least uh, we use a, a strong maximal principle when you apply moving moving plane method. Moving plane method. Uh, in in the for, in the higher order operator, usually you don't have a maximal principle. I, do you use maximum principle in your argument or you avoid and instead you use other devices? Could you explain? Yeah, um, so uh, that's a very uh, wonderful question. So usually uh, uh, they use uh, point, point wide estimate that they require the maximum principle. Mm -hmm. But uh, in our case, uh, we work with uh, integral equation. So 
We don't mm -hmm. need a maximum principle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I... Siu Yang, he used uh, maximum principle, etc., because uh, he worked with uh, differential equation. So that uh, give a very complicated uh, argument. So in our case, we use uh, integral equation, then uh, this is a very uh, simple one. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you, you use integral on oh, this page. You use uh, integral right. brain. But then uh, we revive uh, the, uh, the growth, the behavior of you. So that's very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see, I see, I see. You say it's uh, uh, your former work needs uh, you use maximum principle, but this is a uh, higher order operator, not second order. How, right, how right. do they? Use maximum right. Principle? So it's yeah. So, so so somehow uh, uh, that guy have uh, need to control the size of uh, multiple Laplace and U. So uh, okay. you you if you uh, you can control the size of like um, minus Laplace and U, Laplace and square U, etc. Then uh, you have sort of a maximum principle. I see. I see. Yeah. So, so separated. We call that uh, the super polyharmonic uh, properties. So that replaces uh -huh. the maximum principle. Uh huh. I see. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Uh, maybe if not the case, we would like to invite you to coffee break, right? Starting yeah. from your time noon, right? Oh, yeah, just in after this talk, once we close the talk. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I copied minute. the link uh, and the information for the copy break into the chat. So if okay, you thank want, you. please uh, simply copy and paste. Yeah, and yeah. Then, uh, we will well, start. 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think yeah. that starts from 10, 10 minutes yeah. from now. Yeah, in 10 minutes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, bye.